Hello and welcome to Geordie Giant Veg. Um, sorry, I haven't done a, a video for a while. I've been away. Um, you may, if you follow me Instagram, you may have seen that I've been to Barcelona to an event called Spanabis, which was absolutely tremendous. Loved it. Um, all the people from the hydroponic industry were there. It was great to see them all. Great to meet new people. Um, the likes of Lorraine and Victoria from the Green Queen. If you're not familiar with them, it's a magazine aimed not solely aimed but morely aimed at uh, females um in the medical side of cannabis sort of thing but uh yeah it was very interesting to go down there and see them uh see all the stands and everything i'll post some pictures and some videos of me walking around and i'll show you what went on there um i'm just in my polytunnel at the moment i want to show you what i've got going on here as i said before i've got this uh i've been building the big air pot sort of thing I'll see if I can get a bit further back for some in these six air pots I've got such, uh, some stump carrots sorry I'm a bit stuttery there some stump carrots they are called sweet candle that is the variety and I've got six in each pot so I've got about 30 odd there and in the big pots here I've got some long carrots um, another six in there I've got some parsnips in here six in there i think and some carrots in this one i was going to do i haven't done anything in this back one i was going to do them all the same height as this one but i've used about 20 bags of uh the ultimate soil in there and i've and i've topped them with the soil with cocoa from mills i just can't justify putting another 15 bags in there for to get them all the way i want them and a little bit higher what have you i was going to do more i've got another eight pots here yeah, I was going to do another row of three, but like I say, I just can't justify another load of uh, bags of the compost. Just in case things don't go right with these, I don't want to... This is like an experiment this year. Um, I don't want it to go wrong and waste a couple of hundred quids worth of, well, cocoa and soil. But yeah, this air pot's about five foot, maybe it's a little bit taller, uh, five foot five, and there's under the underground there's a slight little uh, hole in the ground where i've dug underneath them as well so they're sitting these, these are sitting at roughly about i would say about three and a half four foot and this one's like uh, another five foot five and a, five and a half foot what have you but yeah i'm excited to see if these actually work but i've decided to grow some giant carrots and some giant parsnips in this polytunnel with me building the other polytunnel i'll show you in a minute so i'm going to be digging some big holes in here today um, for to take my giant carrots and giant parsnips under covers obviously and I'll be growing some oh there's Alfie hello sunshine he's learning anyway Alfie sit good boy good lad good lad he's learning he's getting there um, yeah I'm going to be growing some giant Yorkshire's uh, uh, sorry Yorkshire giant leeks in these eight air pots um, and the, I'll be, like I say, digging holes for some giant parsnips and giant carrots if I can fit them in here. I was originally going to, um, I apologise for the wind, I was originally going to put them out here where I already started the holes. Sorry about the wind. I started the holes already, they're not big enough them holes. But I've been told I need to put them under cover. So I'll be putting them under cover. Um, in that in that polytunnel there so what I'm gonna be doing here is as you can see I've got like a, a bed which goes over to my cousin's side oh, I think. Oh, I um, yeah I've got a bed which goes over connected to I'm gonna plant a giant pumpkin in there train it through here and hopefully set a pumpkin here and get something big and ugly a uh, bit of fun for the bear anyway the, the Brassica cage I was going to build, I've, I don't think I've got enough of the blue pipe, I like think pipe, so what I've decided to do, I'm just going to use it on this big poly tunnel I'm building here. As you can see, it's going to be a really big tunnel. Inside there is going to be the autoponics uh, system uh, with me leeks and some onions in, and I'm excited to use that. So yeah, that's, that's going to be finished within the next two weeks, because I'm going to be planting out within the next two weeks. Sorry about the wind, like I say. This area 
uh, here is going to be giant marrows I've got some amazing seeds um, I've got some bag seeds I've got some from Dale Toten um, who uh, was second at Malvin last year and I've got some of the bag seeds which won Malvin last year so I've got the best stock this is what I started building last time what I showed you so this is going to get a cover over it as well and this is going to be getting um, some leaks in Cumbrian leaks I think I've got a dozen leaks to go in here and some also some giants to see how they are I put some um, the bark recycled some bark as you can see in the little pathway there and I'm going to do the same with this one I've got a load to clear um, so I need to get, get cracking with that as well and get a cover on next door neighbours chickens chickens inside there having a nice time I've, like uh, I was saying on the last one this big container is full of soil so I've weeded it I've put a big sheet of glass over the top for to protect it and I've sown some stump carrots in there as well that's about two foot I'm not bothered they're just mainly for eating but if I get any decent ones come show day I'll be having a look at them all and see if I can select any um, so yeah I was going to build a big brassica cage here so I'm thinking that's going to have to be made out of timber now because I, like I say I haven't got enough of the blue algae theme pipe it's, um, it's really hard to get hold of the stuff that'll go over the top of the um, the scaffolding pools but yeah um, I'm going to be cracking on in here I need to get my wheelbarrow I'm going to be cracking on in here and the soil I'm going to be taking out of these I'm going to be putting in these air pots I don't want to be wasting any I need roughly about the size of an air pot dug out of each anyway um, for the giant carrots and parsnips I think I've got about 10 or 12 altogether um, some of them I'm not that fussed about there's two or three of them which aren't looking too good um, and the rest are really flying now at home under the um, the 315 daylight on the horizon shade the, where I've got them on the, the light mover I'll show you that in a bit um, when I get home my leeks at home are flying that, like I say they're the Cumbrian variety from Joe McKenzie they're the best leeks I've grown so far I'm really happy with them so if I don't get in the top three of my show this year I'll probably just give up but having said that everyone's probably got good leaks um, the, you might, I might not even get any on the bench you know they might just all be too long too bur they might burst you know we'll see but I've got plenty of leaks to go at um, yeah so I'm gonna crack on all me the, all the red currants I've got in here I trimmed them all back as you can see I, I, cut, I cut all the tops back got told to do that and uh, they're absolutely thriving and the weird thing is that this polytunnel creates a lot of shade to these most of the day so in the morning that corner over there gets um, the light most of the light all day because it's as you can see it's shining on there now and it's the morning and this side gets it mainly through the day as well in the middle is shaded by this polytunnel and it doesn't get a massive amount of light until later on in the day so all these plants in the middle here are way behind as you can see these ones who are getting the light and these ones here so I kind of didn't I didn't put my polytunnel in the wrong place because there was nowhere else to really put it but um, yeah these are going to be the fruit they're going to be fruiting a bit later but it's probably a good thing as well I'll get fruit off this tree over here, this bush, sorry, in these earlier on, as you can see they're starting to get flowers on already, and then as they start to die off I'll probably still get fruit off these, so it's a good thing. I've got the gooseberries over on this section here, and they're flying again, they've got lots of little baby gooseberries on them. Um, I've, I've got to sort this tunnel out, um, and this out, and this out, I'm going to be growing some red cabbages in there I think, and some kohlrabis, we'll see. I've got loads going on. I've uh, got some giant cucumbers yeah I'm gonna be growing some giant poblano chilies this year which the seeds I've got come out of the world record um, heaviest chili the heaviest chili in the world I've got seeds out of that from Dale Toten again he's uh, looked after us he's a good lad and I've got some 
bell pepper seeds which came out of a bell pepper which weighed 750 grams so that was a close to a, um, a record pepper so I've got some of the best genetics you can get I hope I can do it some justice but yeah I'm looking forward to getting cracking this weekend uh, this season sorry uh, there's like I say there's a lot going on I've got, I've got, to, I've got to say a huge thank you to Mills and the guys at Mills who have obviously looked after us Mills pays the bills as they say but yeah join us again shortly and I'll show you some of the holes I've dug out see you in a minute Hola, hope you've all recovered from Spanibus the last couple of weeks. Um, just down the plot here, cracking on. Got all sorts to do. These store me uh, my air pots are still standing nice and nice and neat. Just give them a water. Got some big holes to dig today for my giant carrots. Always remember, Mills pays the bills. Hello out there. Um, I'm having a bit of bother with my spade. It's a brand new spade, but it seems to have holes in it. I'm really struggling to dig this bloody this hole. I'm I'm struggling <clears throat> this bloody spade. I tell you, not worse than a spade with holes in. Digging these car holes are huge. Little invention I made. The long spade. Works smarter, not harder. Don't want to knock you back by these big deep holes. Perfect. Hello and welcome back. Um, I've just about done the polytunnel now. I'm just going to show you what I've done for the giant carrots and parsnips. Um, okay, like as I said before, these are for the long carrots, parsnips, and the stump carrots. And I've dug out the holes now, ready for to take four um, giant carrots. Well, there'll be two giant parsnips and two giant carrots in these four holes here, dug into the ground, into the soil. And I've uh, I've got a little bit of space here. I was going to put another hole here, but I'm not going to bother. I'm going to put a couple of air pots here with something in, just to utilise the space in this polytunnel. And I've made the giant air pots for, again, there'll be two giant carrots, two giant parsnips going in these. And the spare one at the end, I'm thinking I'm going to, I'm going to put my uh, condo giant potatoes in that one. I'm going to probably put maybe four uh, plants in there and hopefully get a big massive ugly uh, potato. Yeah, so that's, that's that. And I've got a nine, I've got nine uh, air pots here full with the soil um, I'm probably going to put uh, peppers in them and some poblano chilies and just keep them in here see how they get on yeah but I'm happy like all these free air pots I got off my customer uh, like I said when I took them I was gonna definitely put them to use so no one can say I've been they've wasted uh, first time growing these giant carrots properly I've grew them hydroponically in the shop in some little 80 litre uh, bins but I've never gotten anything over five five and a half pound really so I'm kind of doing it properly this year with guidance from a friend who's helping us out because I'm like I say I've never really grown them properly but yeah I've just lined my path here with bark as well it's wet at the minute the bark so but when it dries it'll look a lot better you'll be able to tell the difference um I also need to get cracking on with me polytunnel be big uh, air auto pot polytunnel waiting for the cover to come but I still think it's a bit cold we're having the cold spells of snow and stuff like that to put the covers on just yet so I've got a little bit more time I'm not going to be planting out in that system anyway for another two or three weeks so I've got plenty of time to get that polytunnel up and running it shouldn't take as much um, I've got 90% of it done I think it's just putting the loops in place sorting the door out and um, Put the cover on and then obviously I need that I'm gonna line the bottom out uh, with weed suppressant and then put black and white mylar down underneath the pots. It's got to keep it as neat and uh, clean as possible in there. I've been having some ideas. I'm I'm thinking of perhaps growing a giant cucumber um along the floor in that polytunnel or a cantaloupe melon. I'm thinking I'm gonna go for the melon. I'm, I'll probably get two melons in that polytunnel. Um, 
on the floors, vines in and around the uh, the auto pot system, you know. So I'm utilising all the space, be nice and clean in there. So yeah, I'm just messing with ideas at the minute. But yeah, another day's work done. Happy. Um, knackered. Looking for looking forward to the Grand National tomorrow. And a few uh, bets, but I'll show you what's going on at home in the next little bit. Uh, I've got my my greenhouse and my little shack is just absolutely ram packed now. There's, there's, well, it can't move. Everything's got to go out. It's um, at the end of me me limits now, if you know what I mean. I'll show you the giant carrots and parsnips that I've got to put in here as well. Um, let you have a look at them. See how they're growing in the tubes. So join us again in a minute, and I'll show you back in the house. Okay, just a quick clip to show you how I'm intending on watering these because these air pots will dry out extremely quickly whereas these holes in the ground, they're going to hold the moisture way better. So, beforehand I had these smaller um, dripper rings. As you can see, they've got tiny little holes in them all the way along um, which allows the nutrients to drip out of the water. And they're going to be, they're going to be too small for to put around the carrot. Um, I'm hoping the top of the carrot's going to be about the size of this. <laughs> uh, I hope, but yeah, that's going to be too close to the carrot. So what I've done is, I've made some more dripper rings with two sections, and what they'll do is, they'll just sit around the carrot perfectly, and they'll be connected uh, by obviously these connections, these 16 mil. Uh, connections with hose and they should just drip um, water around them and be, that will be linked to a hose pipe I'll have that linked to a hose pipe and um, which will probably have a splitter on it and I'll have a timer on the hose the hose will be turned on constantly and it will be basically regulated oops, regular by this timer there's batteries in there and it's just two AA batteries, it just opens a ball socket every now and again when you want it set. Um, oops. Sorry about that. You just set when you want it uh, to water, day, um, what have you. And then uh, how long you want it to water for. And once that's done, um, it should just do the rest. So far, and it'll water these for us every day, or twice a day, or three times a day, or once a day. You know, it's all up to me. I was thinking of linking all these with the dripper as well. There'll be pressure in the hose, so once the hose is turned on anyway, it, the the gravity. This is what I used last time, the gravity feeder, and it struggled to get to the top there because of the height difference, and it just wouldn't push enough nutrient out. But these will all be linked to a pressurized hose, and um, which will be drip feeding them couple of minutes each day or what have you give them a decent uh, water but yeah should work should work spot on I'm looking forward to it there's a chance I might just link all of these pots to these drippers um, all these pots to the dripper with a timer and then have a, a hose running down here um, to these and I'll have these on the dripper and the water I'll just feed all day be fantastic I'll not have to hardly bother until they need fed and I'll probably be feeding them once a week after that anyway so I'll come in and I'll hand feed them with a, a, a nutrient solution for to make them as strong as possible but yeah that's about it for here and I'll join us again at the minute when I see in my house hello there um, I'm just back in the greenhouse as you can see and it's night time it's pretty dark I've just got the the lights on at the moment uh, this is a 315 daylight by maxi bright um, and it's in a horizon shade and as you can see it's on a light mover so this moves across these leaks as you can see it's all a bit of a blur you'll not really be able to see it properly but it's on a motor in my back garden running across the top of these gives them an extra couple of hours or hour and a so uh, light at night these are the giant parsnips and carrots Looks like a bit of a jungle, which is good. Um, you can see the the carrots are really throwing up a lot of um, a lot of foliage, and so is the the parsnips. You know, they're really flying now. 
I've got how many have I got? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen to pick from. So the ten strongest will go in the things I've been doing today, and the other four will just be going outside and left of their own devices, and we'll see how they get on. Um, like I say, left to do their own thing. So in my little shack here, it seems a bit brighter. I've got in here, I have two 315 daylights um, on an adjuster wing. They don't really cast much shadow underneath these. Um, there is some shadow, but not a lot. And here's my leaks. Oh, yeah, just grab. Sorry about that. Here's the leaks. Um, ready to go out really in the next week or so. They're flying. Like I say, the best leaks I've grown to this date. These are a Joe McKenzie um, Cumbrian leak. And they're, they're, they're fantastic. I'm over the moon with them. I can't fault them at all. Oh, can't fault them at all. Um, I've got about 24 of the McKenzie leaks in here. And they will, shall be... 12 of them will be going into an air pot system, air auto pot system, sorry, not an air pot, an auto pot system. And uh, the other dozen will be going in a trench in their, their own little polytunnel. Over here I've got onions. I need to select some of the onions there. I know they're hard to see. There's some giant onions. There's also some Yorkshire giant leeks over there, which I'm going to be growing for heavyweight. Um, I'm, I'm not going to get much... Um, in the ways of giant onions this year, I'm going for some other things. New, trying some newer things. But yeah, the, um, the giant onions are flying as well. I'll be happy if I get some over, a set of three over £10 each. Um, 12 of them will be going in the uh, auto pot system as well. I've just got a little fan on there, keeping them cool. Uh, I've just got some strays down there, which will probably be going in and um, growing for um, some... Quality onions, um, them ones. But yeah, this is what's going on in the greenhouse and in the shack. If you can see there, the little bit of the sorry about the dogs, uh, the little bit of tipping on the this flag. There's a couple of them like that because I've been been spraying for thrip. I've had terrible thrip this year. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people have, but I'm getting on top of it. I've been spraying regularly, and that's what causes the flags to have a bit of colour dis like discoloration about them. But yeah. I'm happy with these leaks, I'm over the moon actually. So I'll see you again on the next one. Thanks for watching, remember to subscribe and all that jazz for any new updates. I'll speak to you in a bit. Ta-da!